Well, that was a fun MLS versus Liga MX All-Star game, wasn't it? And there's no doubt that I think after this game, there is definitely a big hint that maybe in the future we're going to have something similar to that. And I also want to just say that, you know, it's hard for me to just say that this is just another game. And that this is a friendly at the end of the day. Really, there isn't much that is meaningful other than the fact that there is definitely some bragging rights that MLS fans like myself is going to have against Liga MX fan. But, you know, when you look at how this game played out, it really felt like it was a cup final game. And it really felt like this was really probably the best all-star game I've seen and much better than the previous couple of edition where there's really felt like these players really want to win this. And in the end, the MLS all-star were able to do so and they did it in a PK shootout, which by the way, I didn't even write the final score for the PK shootout, but I believe it was 4-3. Or actually, no, it wasn't 4-3. It was 3-2 in favor of the MLS All-Star in the PK shootout. But let us go all the way back in terms of looking at the starting 11 that was announced. Actually, relatively early in this game. I think the starting 11 was actually announced about two hours before this game was taking place. And the starting 11, we got Galese, Alex Rodon, Yamar, Zimmerman, Nuhu, Christian Rodon, Zarian, Joao Paulo, Gustavo Bo, Raul Rua Diaz. Now I scratch up K. Cal because originally K. Cal was named in the starting 11 of this game. Uh, he was kind of a late scratch, uh, not because of injury related, but it seems like Bob Bradley kind of made some last minute change and bring in Diego Rossi in the starting 11 instead of bringing K. Cal in, in the starting 11 of the All Star game. Uh, they play the Mexican and the U.S. national anthem, but not the Canadian one. And, you know, I understand that this is Liga MX versus MLS, and obviously you're going to have the Mexican anthem playing, even though I'm pretty sure most of those Liga MX players are not Mexican. And you can even tell when they did the Mexican national anthem, which, by the way, was rarely performed on a violin. Um, you can tell they, they didn't really care at, at all. And the same goes with the U.S. national anthem, where a lot of these MLS players are not American but what kind of ticked me off about this is they did not play the Canadian one. And I'm pretty sure those those Canadian team that is TFC, Vancouver, and, and Montreal, they must be very ticked off that they didn't they didn't play the Canadian anthem. Because, you know, as much as I know MLS is mostly kind of an American league, you gotta remember there is still free Canadian team in MLS. And I feel like they clearly should have played the Canadian anthem. I mean, I'm also checked to make sure if there's any Canadian player on the MLS All-Star game, and I don't think there was one. I mean, there was supposed to be one with, with Tasia and Buchanan, but obviously we heard, heard about how he is not not going to... He's actually not going to be be going going back with the New England Revolution, but instead actually going to be go, going to Belgium, which, you know, I, obviously I'll talk a little bit more of that. Probably not this week, in the, as I'm not going to do a News of the Week. Instead, tomorrow I will do a video talking about the announcement of the World Cup qualifying squad that Greg Berhalter named for the upcoming World Cup qualifier. But yeah, that's definitely some big news around MLS where Tejan Buchanan becomes the latest MLS player that, that makes the jump to Europe. So yeah, I, but you know, going back to this, I was not kind of a little bit ticked off the fact that they didn't play the Canadian one because you know, MLS is not just an American league. There's Canadian team in this league too. Uh, lots of empty seat in the the first uh, or in the first couple of minutes of this game and even prior to this game and it makes sense. I mean, you know, this is pretty typical. I mean, insert the whole LA meme about how people don't actually show up to the game until like maybe 20 or 30 minutes into the game. And you know, when this game was taking place and it was announced it was going to be a 6:30 p.m. kickoff, I knew that yeah, that's going to be tough to try to get a lot of these people into the stadium make sure it looked very packed in the beginning because when you have to battle LA traffic especially in in the middle of the week that is gonna be very very brutal and I, I in some way I kind of wish they pushed back the the kickoff time a little bit later I mean I know that will not please East Coast fans and I'm pretty sure a lot of East Coast fans were kind of pissed off the fact that this game was kicked off this this late but at the same time if they kick, kicked it off a look even a little bit earlier then I'm pretty sure those empty seats is even gonna be be more emptier but you know by the time the game of course was was started by the way uh they 
even did like like a flyover, which you know, I mean, for for an MLS game and for an All Star game, I know it's a special occasion, and you know what more American it is than do do a flyover, and it wasn't really like one of those fighter jet flyover, but more like kind of like a helicopter. Their flyover, but I just feel like maybe that's kind of appropriate if this was like an NFL game or any other game. But you know, for an MLS game, even in a special occasion, that kind of did feels like it was kind of low out out of place the way way it is. I mean, especially if you're gonna do a flyover, I feel like they should have done a, a jet flyover instead of you know just the the helicopter flyover. Speaking of helicopter, um, you know, in the first half after you know I. I wrote that the MLS All-Star was definitely on the front foot early in this game. I also kind of questioned, did they put a, a helicopter next to one of one of the mic? Because throughout the most part of this first half, I literally hear a helicopter just going off in the background. And I, I'm just thinking, what, what, like, first of all, I didn't know what that sound was. But I'm like, why did they put a helicopter right next to it? D does the flyover helicopter just stay there next to the stadium? And, and, you know, maybe some of those people that is in the flyover helicopter must have paid a bunch of money to those pilots to, for them to just kind of watch the All-Star game from free from the air. Because, yeah, I, I just, it feels weird to hear, hear like, helicopter noise for, throughout the mic. Oh, uh, they also mentioned that there is VAR in this All-Star game, which is not a big surprise. I mean, yes, I know it's just a friendly, but, you know, this just kind of shows you that, yeah, this is not like any All-Star game, and it, and it wasn't. I mean, as this game goes on, it really felt intense, and it really felt like it was it was almost like, like a cup final kind of atmosphere. Now, in the sixth minute, uh, there was a big opportunity for for MLS to get the opener goal as the hometown Town hero Diego Rossi almost give MLS All Star the opening goal, but Sanchez with some heroic goal line clearance to clear that shot off the line. Uh, Bo did try to follow up the shot, but he puts that one high. Uh, the game did stop temporarily because the name redacted chant rings out in the tenth minute of this game. I mean, honestly, I, I I mean I know it's very tempted for a lot of those Liga MX fans to say the name redacted chant, but really for an All Star game. For a game that doesn't really mean much and you have to do that, come on, guys, you know you know better than that. But in the 20th minute, we finally got ourselves the opening goal of the game, and it's Rodriguez scoring from Sanchez to give Liga MX All-Star a 1-0 lead. Yeah, this was not good defending from from the MLS All-Star. In fact, both of the goals that have been scored in this game was really by poor defending, and this one's just letting Rodriguez wide open in the box, and you just simply cannot do do that if you're the MOS All-Star and in some way that that was kind of also a frustrating goal to concede because I thought up to that point the MOS All-Star were the better team and you could maybe even say in some way that that goal was kind of against the run of play but really after that that uh, Liga MX really started to control this game um and I will say that eventually MOS kind of ride out the the pressure a little bit and that kind of kind of started when they did did make some line change heading into this game obviously since there is unlimited substitution in this game we're going to definitely have a lot of substitution so you know in some way this is this is why i also said that you know it, it so you could maybe say that this is kind of just just a, a a game that is is very ordinary and doesn't really mean much because you're never going to see a game like these kind of thing where you're going to get like a complete line change in the middle of the game because of unlimited stuff that that was made but that definitely they give the give the edge tour tour mls team after they make that line change because in the 35th minute uh gustavo Bo almost equalized for the for the mls all start as he missed wide from 20 yards out but then jimenez on the other end went through on goal but blake was able to cut off his lines and snatch that ball ball away from him uh, it kind of become very end-to-end -end as the pace really started to pick up right near the end of the half but, you know, I also kind of wrote, doesn't seem like either team team have a midfield right now. Like, the way that the both attack has been able to cut through that, that that midfield with just ease, it just makes me wonder, where in the world is the midfield? Are they on vacation right now, or they just got too much into the occasion and don't realize that, yeah, you also got to have to play in this game, because there was just so much gap to exploit for both of, the, for both of these teams uh, right near the end of the half, and hence, that's why it reserved the game to become very end-to-end. Uh, then in the first minute of stoppage time, Jimenez did try to curl, curl one that actually completely flat-footed foot, 
Blake and had him beaten, but uh, fortunately for Blake, he was able to watch that one just go as wide. Uh, the free 252 started to kind of champ for LAFC, even though the LAFC wasn't playing in this game. I mean, you know, they kind of champ chant for LAFC throughout this game, and I understand the free 252 is the official supporter group of LAFC, but you know. Couldn't you guys mix it up a little bit? Couldn't you guys just kind of say, instead of like chanting for LAFC, maybe chant for like MLS? Like you could always change the, the lyrics a little bit because it kind of feels weird. The fact that, you know, they're doing their usual LAFC chant, even though LAFC isn't even playing in this game. In fact, there was at, in the Star 11, there was actually more Sounders player in, in the, the Star 11 than LAFC player. And I actually was thinking about wearing a Sounders jersey if MLS All-Star actually lost this one because really when you look at the Star 11 there was literally, literally six Sounders player in the Star 11 and pretty much half of the team was from the Seattle Sounders but yeah you know it was kind of weird that that the free 252 decided to to do that but what's even more weird is that when I saw some of the the fans in the free 252 supporter section some of them were wearing Liga MX jersey and I'm like yeah that's not a good look the the way that you're basically wearing a Liga MX jersey and you are chanting for an MLS team because you basically just kind of contradict yourself. I mean, it's almost like, like let's say an example is if you go to like an LAFC or LA Galaxy fan, you don't want, or if you're going to LAFC and LA Galaxy game, which it's going to be coming up this weekend, you don't want to wear an LAFC jersey on one end and then a Galaxy hat in the other. I mean, that would be a very very bad look and it just kind of felt like that was the, the case with some of the fans like yeah if you're going to 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 chant and chin for an MLS team try not to to do it and also wearing a Liga and Mekis jersey it just kind of feels feels weird and feels bad bad for you but either way oh uh, we do have to have time one nothing in favor of Liga and Mekis all start heading into the second half and they look like they were try, trying to capitalize on on that lead by making king a complete a, a lot of changes in halftime. In fact, they pretty much gone with a completely different team in the second half, making 10 changes. The only change that they did not make was the goalkeeper. And, you know, when you make that many, many chances, sometimes it could benefit fit you. Maybe the changes that you made and the team that you set might be stronger against the current group, but it can also upset set the balance of play. And I feel like maybe it kind of upset the balance of play for Liga and Mekis team because MLS All-Star really start, started to get going in the the second half. Uh, Shari had a shot that was just blocked off the line in the 51st minute. Before one minute later, the MLS All-Star gets on the board. And it's Morello who scores to make it 1-1 in this one. And that was actually his first goal that he has scored at home at Bank of California Stadium. As he also scored from his, his teammate Atuesta to tie the game up at one apiece. So, you know, if you're an LAFC fan, you're happy to see... Murillo score a goal and you also like to see Atuesta get on the assist but you're also thinking where was this when we were playing against the Vancouver Whitecaps or when was this when we're playing these last couple of games when we we haven't haven't been able to put the ball into the back of the net but you know after that that equalizer Liga and Mekis though to their credit started to control the possession and look to try to take the lead back but Talavera did deny Pepe as the flag went up in the 61st minute. So that goal wouldn't have counted if if Pepe did score. But as the time winds down, you just kind of feel like this game was kind of up for grabs. And there was chances that was coming in both ends. Uh, Sambraza puts a free kick high from 21 yards out. Before on the other end, Guzman was able to deny Pepe from long range. And then Pepe had a chance to put it high from close range. By the way, Ricardo Pepe at the end of the game did not name as the MVP of of this all-star game and in some way I feel like he, he, he sh should have got it because later on I'll tell you why why you know I'm wearing an FC Dow Dallas jersey and the fa fact that why why you know actually no I'll just review it to you guys that he of course was the one one that was a able to win the game for the MLS all or the MLS all-star because as we go to the pale kick shootout you know uh, with this game tied at one apiece uh, Turner actually made three straight penalty kick save at one point in the penalty kick shootout. And there was actually one point where there was four straight missed penalty in this PK shootout. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. That was kind of one of the worst PK shootout I've seen seen so far. And, you know, I know it's it's just the all-star game. 
But, you know, some of those penalties was just absolutely egregious. I mean, you can argue maybe the, the penalty that Nani took was probably the wor worst one where he just completely, not only missed the target, but just puts it way, way wide toward the goal. And then I think one of the league at Mekis, his player also puts one that was not not on target and there was a couple ones that was literally hit straight to the goalkeeper so yeah it was definitely not one of the best penalty kick but that being said you know the goalkeeper for both of the team was good and especially Turner as I mentioned at one point he made three straight penalty kick save on the league on league at Mackey's team but in the end it was Ricardo Pepe the ones that was able to score the winning penalty for the MLS all-star game and yeah that of course is the final Final of this game as the MLS All-Star able to win this All-Star game by winning 3-2 against Liga MX's All-Star. Shots in this one, 15 shots compared to 13 that Liga MX's had. 3 shots on goal compared to 2 that Liga MX's had. 4 shots off target compared to 7 that Liga MX's had. 8 shots that was blocked compared to 4 that Liga MX's had. And possession was 48% possession compared to 52% possession that Liga MX's had. And I can guarantee you that Don Gabbard is literally working on next year trying to, to have another... MLS versus Liga MX's All Star game because honestly, I actually really enjoyed this. And this, you know, I, at first I thought maybe this was kind of a little bit of a of a, of a gimmick key, and the fact that you know it's just kind of a a friendly game. And even though you know at the end of the day, if one team is able to win, the other team will e easily say, yeah, it's just an, a friendly game, and it doesn't really mean anything. But the way that this game kind of went, and the way that you can see how intense tense this was and and the players in this game clearly felt felt like almost like this is more of a cup final rather than just an ordinary all-star game friendly you gotta say that this is definitely one that i think in the future they're going to bring bring back and you know this could also maybe be a game could be a statement that mls is definitely closing the gap i mean i think when you look at both of this league i mean i never like to kind of compare both of the league in terms of compare edge but you know if I have to as it seems like the media is always hype up in terms of that there's no doubt MLS has started to ca catch up a little bit I mean Liga MX does still have the superiority and they will always use the argument of the fact that they there's never been an MLS team ever won the CONCACAF Champions League but when you look at how how this game is and you also look at, at the competitiveness overall and also this this rivalry that even go on to international stage between Mexico and the US and this year the US has really dominated in terms of this this rivalry with them them winning the gold cup and also winning the nation's league final it definitely shows you that the gap is definitely closing and you know I I just feel feel like in a matter of years the gap will definitely get into equal strength although at that point let's just hope there won't be any more more talks about how MLS and Liga and Mexicans potentially merge together because this was also one of the big headlines heading into this game where Liga and Mexicans and MLS might be merged together now that they have have this partnership with each other but the good news is I did hear at at halftime uh when they interviewing Don Gabbard he did mention that there probably isn't going to be any plans at, anywhere in the future that they are going to merge Liga MX and MLS together now that being said you know we'll, we'll see down the line if that is still going to be hold hold true and if there's one thing about Don Gamber you know whatever he he said doesn't always come come true and I'm pretty sure Sacramento fans can can agree on that that bigly but yeah we'll, we'll see see how this of course would go and also we'll see whether or not in the future we're going to get another MLS All-Star versus Liga MX All-Star, or maybe heading into next year, are we once again going to have this kind kind of, of game where the best of MLS will once again face the best of Liga MX? But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.